this is cylinder. That is annoyingly tricky. Why is it annoyingly tricky? Well, because the mechanism that locks the puzzle of pieces together is inside, invisible to you. You can't see it. There's, there's actually no way to uh, see them unless the pieces were transparent. Uh, so it's all a case of done with uh, your sense of touch. Uh, with that in mind, let's get straight into uh, solving it. What you want to do is hold on to the top ring, which is where you've got it up, doesn't really matter at this point. It will later, but right now it doesn't matter. Um, you've got no way of knowing at the moment if you're holding it the wrong way up. So, what I'm going to do is just randomly rotate that bottom ring, and you'll be able to feel uh, it knock against something, or some loss of traction, or increased traction bump in a road kind of thing. But you'll be able to notice. And eventually what will happen is that one of the three pieces will partially fall through. Okay? It won't go all the way through because there are things on. At this point in time, what you want to do is put your finger in here and see if you can rotate the three pieces around in the puzzle. If not, then what you want to do is, to, is actually push it back to the highest position you can from underneath and then rotate all those three pieces within the rings. But don't let go of the rings at the point. Don't let them slide against each other right now. What that's done is the top part has found a gap in the upper ring. And you want to see if the, this piece, when it's in that gap in the upper ring, will allow all three pieces to rotate. This will become clear later on if you watch the rest of the video. So I'm going, to rot I'm going to bring it back up and then start to rotate those three pieces to keep the outer rings steady. And the clockwise carrier still in And now that piece has gone down, again, see if they'll rotate. No. Last, last time. Let's go the same way. If you were now rotate these back the other way, you'd get the same piece fall down, obviously. So uh, rotate the same way. So the third piece was down. And no, they still don't rotate. What that means is we have the puzzle upside down. Can't be helped. Oh well. So now I'm just going to rotate, having turned the puzzle over, I'm going to rotate the top ring a bit until a piece falls through, like that. So now it's the same thing again. Do they rotate? Yes, they do. Fantastic. We not only have the piece, uh, the puzzle, sorry, the right way up, we are ready to start properly solving. So one piece has fallen through, a gap in the top ring. When I say a gap, you see. We would like uh, one of the other pieces to fall through that gap as well. I'm going to rotate around until this piece is in the same position of the rings where the gap is and falls through. Now it's fallen through the same amount. What I'm going to do now is just try there. A minor adjustment to the lower ring and you'll find the lower ring gap as well will, will come into play. So now we have this piece here, which is at the top of the puzzle, this piece here, which is halfway down, and that piece there, which is all the way at the bottom. And I don't know if you can see that very, very well here as well. There we have the piece all the way at the bottom. Let's get the right hand through. Puzzle. What we need to do now is this uppermost piece is we want to rotate it counterclockwise. It will only go half of the distance between here and there, that edge. Okay, so now we've got this two triangle situation going on, which allows us to then rotate the piece that is halfway down the puzzle. And rotate that counterclockwise as well. And again, for half the distance around the circle. When you get it all the way around to the join back up with the topmost piece. That piece that was at the very bottom falls out. And you can now just take this apart completely. It looks elegantly or as uh, ugly as you would like. Uh, I like doing this. Uh, ugly as hell. That piece comes out. There's this one piece there. There's two pieces separate. That is how you take it apart. Next, we're going to go through what actually makes it a puzzle. And so you can tell the short route to putting it back together. So the puzzle consists of, among other things, these two rings. Uh, the puzzle makers have very kindly rounded the outside edges 
so that you know that the pieces do not go together like this. You can see that it's very, very nice out of there, they get that nice edge. But in fact, they go together like this. It's not much better. The actual mechanism that makes it a puzzle is two part. Uh, inside each ring, so from here, to the outside edge, there is a, a lip that goes two thirds of the way around the entire circumference of the, uh, the ring you see on the other end. So there is a gap one third of the way around. And so when you rotate one of the rings independent of the other one, you make the gap smaller than one third. And of course, each one of these wedges is one third. So when you make the gap smaller, this now can't fit through the gap and slide up and down the tunnel. It's only when these are properly aligned, so then, like so, that a piece will actually fit into the gap. So that's part one. Part two is the other pieces, two of which are identical. They look like this. So those two are identical. It's the third one that really makes it a puzzle. You can see the difference there. So this one, those lips with the gap, as these are inside the puzzle piece like this, and they're rotating. On these pieces, those lips both ride on here. And at the beginning when it rides up and down in the, in the puzzle, there's a wall at each end which won't allow it to rotate down. Except for this piece, once this goes down in the puzzle, it doesn't matter because the two lips can still run in here and in here. So that's what the unlock is, is this piece here. To put the puzzle back together again, take your, your two rings, make the tunnel so that the gaps are aligned. Take one of the identical pieces, this only has two gullies, leave the, uh, the three gully guy out of the way for now. Take one of the pieces of the two, pop him in, so he's riding those tracks on his two gullies, and he's lined up with the top of the puzzle, as if he was the beginning position, as if he hasn't moved at all. Then you're going to take the part that has three parts, the three gullies, and imagining that the, the part where the third gully is, so not this part of my thumb, but the part of my fingers, imagining that's the top coming from the other side through the gaps. It's actually really difficult to explain, um, trying to laminate it as much as possible. So that goes in. And we're imagining that he is halfway down the puzzle. So he has gone through the top gap like that. So top of the puzzle, halfway down. The last piece, and note that there is an offset if this wedge, as you're looking at it, is, you know, the center of it at 12 o'clock, the center of the other wedge is at 130 as you're looking at it right there. So when I put this in, I'm not aiming for directly underneath this hole, I'm aiming for just off to the side, closer towards it. So that goes in for as far as he can up the gaps. Once he's gone as far as you can push him, then you can use a finger from underneath to support it, but you now need to move these two pieces out of the way clockwise. So using my finger here, I'm just going to push. So that happens and now that piece can be moved all the way up through the gaps. Because we know that that position there, as, as you're looking at it, we'll say that's you know between 8 and 12. I know that would be a third year, but between 8 o'clock and 12 o'clock, you need to move that lower piece that's all the way that's halfway in the puzzle into the 8 to 12 position. But keep the rings in, in place, of course. So rotate the whole puzzle around. And then that should allow that piece to find the gaps in the lips, come up, and then just spin the cylinders. 
now locked again, ready for friend, neighbor, colleague, or whatever to find it and pull their hair out, try to take the pieces apart. 